You know, it's funny to, to be doing this on video because we really want to be able to take people on tours. There's just something different about being in the community with people and, and seeing the, the incredible asset that this is to our city. Uh, but we got to do what we can right now in the midst of COVID. And so I want you to come with me and I want to show you uh, what I hope to show you in person at some point. So when you get to this site, one of the first things you're going to see is a church building this massive community center building and a field. But what you'll notice when you drive in is the potholes and the bumpiness trying to get up to park. But once you get in, we're gonna take you inside the chapel. And when I take you inside, what you're gonna see is, is this incredible facility that has huge potential for the neighborhood. And I want you to imagine, instead of carpet and pews and what's really outdated, brand new floorings, restored bathrooms, updated ceilings and lighting, and a high quality audio visual system that'll allow us to use that space for years and years to come for multi-purpose reasons. We're seeing weddings in there, conferences, young life coming and having club in there. We're seeing music recorded in that space. Uh, we're seeing our teens come back from school and enter into that space first before they head into the community center. It won't take much. It's a half a million dollars to renovate that site, and we can start using it immediately. It's our first touch point back into the community. It'll provide bathrooms we can use for the fields, and it'll provide a space to use for programming immediately. From there, we're gonna walk across, right in front of the community center, into the field. We'll walk up a few steps, and when you get into this field, you're gonna notice a building that looks like it was built in the 1970s, and that's because it was. This whole site was built in the 70s by the Salvation Army, and, and the, the buildings look like that. As we walk up there and walk past uh, the concession stand, you're gonna see another building, and you're gonna see open up this beautiful field, uh, or at least in my mind it's beautiful because I can see it restored. We're gonna put turf down. We're gonna see this field not just have football, but we're gonna add baseball thanks to a partnership with Kershaw's. We're gonna see the, uh, the pride of this community come back. You know, one of the first things I was told by community members with the field uh, is that if I gave them a blank check and a blank canvas, the first thing they'd do is bring back baseball. And we're thrilled to partner with Kershaw's to bring back baseball into Cedarcrest. Uh, when that field gets redone, we'll be moving bleachers to the other side. There'll be a four lane track over there. Uh, and this is gonna be the pride of Southern Dallas. The, the field that we're gonna compete with is the Cotton Bowl. Let that sink in for a second. The Cotton Bowl is gonna be the competition we have for the football field we're putting there. We are so excited to partner with the Cedar Crest community and really the Southern Dallas community to be able to provide a high quality field that can compete with anywhere else in the city. Uh, we're excited to see DISD games come there, Pop Warner football come there, and, and baseball come back into that community. Uh, I see parties happening out there. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing asset for the city. And then as we turn around, we're gonna walk back across and into the community center. It's a 20,000 square foot building that is home to dreams and visions and education uh, that right now are being locked out. And when we walk in the front door, what you're gonna see is that this building hasn't been touched since the 70s when it was built. The floors are falling apart. Uh, right when you walk in, you're gonna look at something that looks like you're getting checked into a jail. Imagine how you'd feel walking into that space. As you look at the image, you probably are gonna feel that way. We've gotta take the bars down. We've gotta take the, the barrier away. And we've gotta help people understand when they walk in, this is an opportunity to walk into, not something to be kept from. The trophy case on the left will get updated. The reason is this community, full of history, full of championships in Pop Warner football and in basketball. Uh, guys like Kenyon Martin came through here. Chris Bosch came through here. We're gonna see that legacy restored to this place. Right behind the, the jail-like thing we're gonna tear down and open it up into a beautiful lobby, you're gonna walk into the gym. This gym, if you look up in the, in the rafters, you'll see banners, championship banners. We had kids travel to Finland, win a gold medal over there in the Junior Olympics. We had kids win national championships. We've heard the stories of how this gym kept kids off the streets uh, and into something positive. 
Coming back out, you'll see bathrooms that are gonna be completely renovated and restored. On the other side of the gym, we walk into and through uh, a kitchen. And this kitchen is an asset. There's a grandmother in the community who's thrilled to start cooking again for the community. And we're gonna restore that. And, and if you walk through there into a dining room, you're gonna see a wall. That wall's coming down. There's a wall on the other side of it. It's coming down too. And we're gonna add some temporary walls that can come and go as needed. So we can have up to as many as four classrooms or as large as one auditorium, all connected in with the kitchen. And it's gonna look and feel like a home, just like our other community centers do. It's gonna be the dining room. You're gonna see kids tutoring in there. You're gonna see kids doing homework in there, doing our literacy program in there, like they're sitting at the kitchen table. You, you leave those rooms and you out, enter out into the hallway. On the other side of that, we've got two things. One, we've got an area that's gonna be reserved for counseling. We're gonna partner with local groups like Momentus Institute or Jewish Family Services, who we partner with on our other two communities. And we're gonna see kids have access to high quality counseling and adults have access to high quality counseling with them being permanently in that space. And then on the other side of that, you're gonna see an open area. We're gonna take down some walls and we're gonna open things up so it's like a living room. I want you to see couches and TVs and area rugs and lamps. Just like in our other community centers, it's gonna be an inviting feel for people to sit and enjoy. Enter the space and just be. And that's important. We're open at 10 a.m. every day, all the way until about eight to 10 o'clock at night, depending upon the day. From 10 to two, we're open to adults and seniors. And we need space for people to be able to come and enjoy and just be present and get into conversation while we determine with them what they're looking to do, which we can then use those classrooms to bring in programming like knitting, partner with the Salvation Army to do things for, for seniors or job programs with Workforce Commission. And then one of the other rooms you're gonna see is the weight room. And we're gonna take that weight room and we're gonna turn it into a high quality room that people are proud of. It was once the chapel, a uh, number of guys have told us that they came to faith in that room. Uh, but with the chapel that we started with, we've got this high quality weight room that we can do something with. We're talking with some really important foundations about putting in a golf simulator that can be used for baseball uh, and football as well. And we think it's a way to attract kids, not just to those sports, but also to the game of golf. Cedar Crest Golf Course is less than a mile away. How can we leverage this space on our field to introduce kids to the game of golf and then use that as a bridge to go to this golf course that for many of them don't feel like they're allowed to go there. It's, it's a mental barrier, but we can remove that by providing access to golf on site. And then upstairs, we've got a two bedroom apartment that was home to Salvation Army staff when it was first opened in the 70s. And we're gonna renovate that, use it for some office space and uh, some other needs so that we can be here permanently. So all in all, you're talking about a fully restored site 10 acres that can be home to a pride and joy asset for the city of Dallas. It can be a beacon on a hill in, in southern Dallas, and it quite literally is up on a hill at one of the highest points in the southern sector. That's what Cedar Crest is going to be. It's going to be home to an incredible asset for this city, and it's going to be home to raising up community leaders who want to carry this legacy into the future. It might have been closed for three years, but those days are over. And with your help, we can get this thing reopened and restored to a level that it hadn't seen in a long time, a level that this entire city can be proud of. For more information, you can visit behindeverydoor.org slash cedarcrest. Hope you'll join us.